TIG cups. There's a right one to use, there's a wrong one to use, and there's a very simple, easy formula to follow to help you set them up correctly. It's so easy, in fact, that even a welder can do it. It's Weld Coach, your personal welding instructor, anywhere. If you're new here, thanks for tuning in. My name is Justin. I'm the creator of the Fabrication Series YouTube channel, and I also teach classes over on WeldCoach.com. You should go over there and book a class. Or at least after this episode, at least, right? Because we, we got some stuff we got to cover about that you, you should probably know about. Now, the purpose of a TIG cup is to direct argon shielding gas over your part as you weld it. Yeah, seriously, that's, uh, that's all they do. So why is it so confusing? Eh, well, maybe it's because of the fact that there's a lot of them to choose from that do a bunch of different things, but luckily we can simplify all of this. As you probably guessed, the larger the cup you have, the more argon it's going to consume. So right off the get-go, you could sit there and choose your cup based on your budget. If you don't have the money for excessive use of argon, then you just eliminated half the cups out of the kit. But is it really that simple? That just use the cup that you can afford the argon bill for? Well, yeah, in a sense, it is. I mean, because you can weld virtually every metal with any cup out there, and there's very few exceptions to that rule. And it's even considered sometimes a skill or a measure of skill if you can put down a passing weld with the smaller cups or no need for the fanciness. But that's, we'll get to that. I, I don't want to get too far ahead of things here. Let's kind of roll it back just a little bit here. Now, every single TIG cup out there is referenced by a number, and sometimes they're even given funny names, right? But that number tells you everything you need to know about that cup, including how to set it up and where to place everything. The number of the cup is the diameter of the outlet of the cup measured in sixteenths of an inch. Yes, unfortunately, that means that you metricers that can't stand imperial measurements are either going to have to understand fractions or learn how to convert them properly. Otherwise, your welds are... Well, they're most likely going to suck. <laughs> but either way, the 5 is a 5 sixteenths of an inch diameter outlet. The number 8 is 8 sixteenths or half of an inch. 12 would be 12 sixteenths or 3 quarters of an inch, and 16 would be 16 sixteenths or 1 inch in diameter. That diameter also corresponds to where you set your flow rate and the amount of tungsten stick out you should operate with. So let's start with the number 12 here, for example. This is 3 quarters of an inch, which means your tungsten should be 3 quarters of an inch of stick out. Really? That much? I mean, it's kind of absurd, isn't it? Well, in a way, one might think that, but in all honesty, the higher up the cup is off the part, the greater the gas envelope it provides. If you take the tungsten and you suck it way up into the cup like this, for one, you're cutting the gas flow off right after your weld, rendering the cup damn near useless, and two, it's really hard to see what you're welding when you have to lay down on the table like this. And as a side note here, some might suggest this is why we use glass cups, but in all honesty, it, with a glass cup, you don't actually look through the cup, contrary to popular belief. It's kind of like looking at a straw in a glass of water, you know how it refracts or whatever the case is. Not to mention the large glass cups, for instance, have like screens and stuff like that inside of them, so they, they don't work exceptionally well for that. But either way, that stick out rule is actually within a window. That window means that you can go maybe a little bit more or a little bit less. For example, this is a half inch of stick out on a number eight cup. According to that rule, that is correct. But in all honesty, I think it looks a little bit ridiculous. I mean, having that much stick out on an eight, that's just, I don't know, it just looks funny to me, right? So I actually stick it out about three eighths of an inch, 10 millimeters for you guys that speak that language. And that's about where I run it. I think it looks and works and operates best that way. What you definitely don't want to do is follow that silly internet hack that came out years ago. I think it was actually a joke, but a lot of people seem to want to take it seriously. Uh, what they ended up doing is uh, sucking the tungsten all the way up into the cup and then saying, well, if it's that far into the cup, then that's perfect because you'll never dip your tungsten. And that is true, but then you're operating with a ridiculously high arc length and yeah, that just doesn't work out right. So make sure you follow that stick out rule closely. If it's a half inch or if it's a three quarter inch or five sixteenths or whatever, stick it out to about right there. That's where the cup operates best. When it comes to flow rate, there is also a very handy simple rule that we can follow with that. If you take the number of the cup and you multiply it by two, that's your minimum gas flow measured in cubic feet per hour. If you multiply by 2.5, there's your maximum gas flow in cubic feet per hour. For liters, take the number of the cup and set the gauge there. That's your minimum. If you take the number of the cup and add two, that's your maximum in liters. Very, very simple formula to follow. 
what you definitely don't want to do is exceed that in one direction or the other. Always operate within that window of where the cup is supposed to be set at. An example of why? Well, let's just say you laid down a really crappy weld with like a number five cup or something like that, and you're like, oh, well, you know, it's got to be the gas, so I'll just jack that way up there. Well, if you send a whole lot of gas flow through a cup that's not supposed to be rated for that, then you're going to turn your part into what sounds like a jet engine, and it's actually going to start stirring all of the atmosphere into it and causing a lot more problems. So if you think your gas flow was not set correctly and that's why you made a crappy weld and then you went and turned it up, you're going to lay down a crappier weld. There's kind of no way around that one. So as a little bit of a recap here, the diameter of the cup equals the amount of stick out you should operate with. You can go a little bit more, you can go a little bit less, but you don't want to go too far in one direction or the other, otherwise you defeat the purpose of the cup. They work best when you follow that rule, provided that your flow rate is correct. For cubic feet per hour, the number of the cup times two is your minimum flow. The number of the cup times 2.5 is your maximum flow. For liters, the number of the cup is your minimum flow. The number of the cup plus two is your maximum flow. But which cup do you use for which metal? Now, I did mention earlier that you can use just about any cup on any metal with very few exceptions, but we, we can refine this a little bit more. Now, I'm not going to suggest that buying those big giant cup kits with so many of them in there or whatever the case is are, are a bad thing or whatever the case is. It's just oftentimes that people find that they bought 50 different cups and they only use a couple of them. Even in my professional career, I weld virtually every single metal out there from your basic stuff all the way to the exotics, and I only use four cups. Well, technically, now that I can afford the Argon and I don't mind wasting it, and since I do a lot of social media welds that like to have pretty colors, I only use three cups for literally every single metal that I weld. We'll try to make this as easy as possible, and maybe you agree with this one or maybe you don't, but if you do, well, it'll be easy for you too. The number five standard is my go-to for aluminum. The reason why is aluminum is not a reactive metal. It doesn't need a whole lot of gas over the part while you're welding it, which is actually fantastic because we can save some money in between cylinder swaps. But the best part about it is, the less coverage you have or the less area that the argon is present in, the more control you have over the bead on aluminum. The reason behind that is because the arc is going back and forth. It literally shuts off, turns around, and goes back up the other way several times every single second, depending on your frequency. Now, we covered some of that in the AC TIG theory video, so if you want to check that out, it might make a little bit of sense. But having that smaller cup and that smaller envelope is probably the best thing you can use for aluminum. And the reason why I use a standard as opposed to a gas lens is because I typically work in very, very tight areas. And having this, I don't know, what big old like bell housing or whatever in my way as I try to you know, look around that or whatever is kind of inconvenient. But is it okay to use a gas lens on aluminum if you chose to use you know, that or whatever the case is? Well, yeah, it's just fine. You can, you can use a gas lens on it. You can use standard all you want. It doesn't really matter. The number eight gas lens is kind of what we would call the universal cup. I usually refer to it as like the steel cup, but you can use it on aluminum. And it's also the biggest cup you should ever use on aluminum. Nothing ever larger than that. And the reason why is because the arc will tend to really want to run away and the puddle gets a little bit muddy or whatever the case is because there's so much argon on it. So, but you can still use it. Some professionals even prefer it. But it's great for things like steel. Um, you can do chromoly, obviously, with it. You can do, um, you know, Dokal R8, DO, you know, any of your regular DC stuff, and you can even get into stainless steel territory if your skill is on point. And in fact, that's actually a good way to measure your skill or your current skill level is if you can lay down like perfectly golden beads or whatever the case is with a number eight gas lens, you're pretty much right on point. So if you want a one and done, the eight gas lens is great for virtually every metal you're going to weld if you're going to stay out of the super exotic territory. The number 12 cup, this is my go-to plus cup, I guess you could say. You cannot use it on aluminum, and it's also stated on the box, not recommended for AC use because the arc will get, well, it'll get pretty erratic and crazy. Not to mention it is a complete and utter waste of argon to use that much flow on aluminum. But for everything else, it's a fantastic cup for that. It will lay down some of those nice rainbows and stuff like that. And of course, in my profession or my industry, having those little rainbow tails and patterns and stuff like that, and the rainbows on stainless and everything else like that, it outsells a regularly welded part or a colorless part about three to one. So this is the cup I use for making those pretty little rainbow trails and patterns and stuff like that. I'm kind of lazy. I will use this on steel. I will use it on, you know, chromoly and all the rest of those metals. It's complete overkill, but like I mentioned earlier, I can afford the argon now, so I just pump it out and it makes for a lot of likes on social media. 
Finally, we have the number 16 cup, and that is uh, what we would call my titanium cup. On weld metals, it's labeled as the stainless cup because when you do stainless steel, you technically don't want to have all those colors in it, and the larger the cup you have, the uh, less likely that you're going to get those colors and such. But uh, it's also like mandatory for titanium work. Only because titanium is a very reactive metal and an extremely sensitive metal, not to mention a ridiculously expensive metal. So the, it needs a lot of coverage while, while you're welding it. And that's the cup we use for that. A lot of people do like to use it for stainless, whatever the case is. Uh, you know, it's pretty much up to you at that point. It's absolutely overkill for things like steel and chromoly and stuff like that. But hey, if you can afford the argon, I mean, go for it. So literally these four cups right here, and in my case three because I don't use one uh, anymore, or at least very often, is literally every single metal you can weld. I mean, take your pick. But let's just say you're like, okay, well, you know what? I'm never going to get into titanium. Well, there's one cup you don't need. Hey, look, there's three now. And you're like, you know what? I can afford the argon. I think I'll just go ahead and splurge on it. Well, there's one more cup you can take away from that. Now you have two cups, aluminum, everything else, except for titanium. I mean, you see how all of this works, right? If you're like true one and done, be like, I only do aluminum, steel, maybe occasionally some stainless. Look, there's one cup you can use right there. It's so much easier that way. Now, if you really feel so inclined to go out there and buy like an Amazon cup kit or whatever the case is, or one of those jumbo master sets of all these different sizes and all that other stuff, I mean, go for it. It certainly wouldn't hurt anything to you know, have all that many different sizes or whatever in your arsenal. I mean, that's cool, but you'll eventually discover the difference between a number seven cup and a number eight cup is one. I do want to throw out a little bit of a caution here, or one of those, you know, heads up things. If you're going to go out there onto like Amazon or whatever bargain store or whatever the case is and buy that jumbo, you know, 50 piece cup kit for like $12.99 shipped on Prime or whatever the case is, uh, just take it from me, avoid it, okay? Uh, there's a reason why they're cheap and there's a reason why uh, there's knockoffs inside of there. They, they just flat out don't perform. Uh, take it from me. I've tried them. I've ran them. If you get the, you know, straight Pyrex tube with the two green O-rings on it or whatever the case is, it's going to cause problems with your weld. Uh, you can believe me and trust me, or you can just go out there and buy it anyway. It's up to you. But just remember that cheap consumables, cheap parts will cause anomalies. They will create problems with your weld. And when you first start out welding, you don't want to question these things. You want to know that what you have in there will produce the result you expect it to produce once your skill goes up there. Rather than chasing your tail, stick with brand names, real manufacturers, you know, uh, premiums are like CK Worldwide, Furic, and a couple of other ones out there. OEMs, your Miller, Lincoln, Aesop. I mean, they're, yeah, they're kind of expensive or whatever, but you know, that's fine. Just get quality consumables that you know are going to do what they're supposed to do. But I think that wraps it up with TIG cups. Uh, you know, that's about all I think I can cover on them. And I hope this makes sense to you. And of course, get over to weldcoach.com because you can book a class and you can learn one-on-one -on -one from a personal instructor, like literally somebody on the other end of your device. Like if I was talking to you right now, like, this is what it would look like if I was teaching you in a class. Except you can talk back to me and I can answer your question right then and there. So can the other coaches. And they're all really good at what they do. It's an awesome thing. But, but thanks for watching, though. I mean, hope you subscribe. And... Yep. Tig Cups.